Hello everybody, now we are uh, in lecture number 6 and we are going to talk about um, uh, or we are going to complete the model we have started last time uh, and as we uh, to remember what we uh, what we did in the last uh, lecture we talked about the modified game clay model and um, we started a model and we said that the major thing that we will learn in this uh, lecture is how to extrude for 3d and how we can uh, divide uh, a solid element uh, in 3d and uh, we use surface solid imprint for the bile and we have to use the auto connect so when we start to uh, when we start to uh, mesh uh, the our problem it will uh, when we start to mesh our problem it will create uh, uh, like connected faces uh, so all meshing are connected together then we will go to meshing 3d and we will extract our wheeling and struts and uh, we will mesh 1d for our piles and anchors then we went to uh, mesh element uh, parameter and we're gonna use this to uh, be able to define uh, the soil layer uh, for uh, like uh, the material for each layer individually then we will go into interface uh, uh, create an interface. We already talked about the interface earlier and we said that the interface is the, uh, an element between uh, two different uh, element, uh, element with different materials uh, to create as a transition zone and its thickness depends on the relative stiffness between those two materials. If the relative stiffness is small like the two materials stiffness are close to each other now we can include an, uh, a virtual thickness for the interface uh, small which will be almost one millimeter but if the relative stiffness between the two material are very high like we are talking about concrete or steel or another material like uh, soil so we know at this time that the relative stiffness between the two material will be very high that's why the thickness of the interface will be larger up to uh, 10 centimeters the material for the interface it uh, it's, it's considered like um, it's considered uh, or it's related to the soil material and uh, it's re reduced parameter f either for the stiffness uh, parameter or for for the nonlinear parameter uh, the factor we can like we already saw that how we can calculate this manually or uh, how to do this uh, automatically through the software if we want to include it at each layer but as a recap for what we talk about interface, we said there is an important factor called uh, reduction factor, which reduces the stiffness uh, properties and the nonlinear properties like the cohesion and the friction angle and the lengthy angle for the material. Uh, interface consider like a material which simulates the looseness of the soil because of the construction uh, and uh, the soil between the soil it's uh, the block of soil and the structure will be loosened so this interface is simulating this and we already saw the effect of the interface on the results of the sheet pile when we were calculating in 2d and we realized that the straining action in the on the structure like the moment has increased uh, with a very uh, reasonable uh, amount which will affect our design that's why we have to include the interface in our pro in our problem to be able to uh, have more realistic uh, simulation uh, so we will have to consider uh, or we will consider interface in our problem when we simulate the she sheet bile then we will start to define the uh, gravity load and we have already know how to add the pretension force in uh, the anchor we will simulate anchor today as uh, we draw it last time and we will consider pretension force in this uh, anchor uh, then we will go to the static slope uh, analysis we will add the boundary condition we will consider an automatic boundary condition and we will see how we can include boundary condition for the bile uh, 
Uh, after this, we'll go to the most important cave, which is the construction stage, which simulate how we can build our problem. Uh, and we will talk about this in details today. Then we'll go to analysis and we will define the analysis parameter and we will run our analysis. Then we will talk too much about how we can present our result today. To remember it was uh, the problem it was like a block of soil which cons uh, consists of three layer different layers the top layer the middle layer the bottom layer and we have a sheet pile this sheet pile will uh, have a, a depth of uh, 12 meters and the excavation depth is 10 meters the excavation will be done in four stages at the top stages will be supported through wheeling and struts uh, the uh, the bottom two stages uh, uh, will be supported through wheeling and anchors. Uh, uh, we we see here that we have four anchor four anchors and four struts. Uh, in the longer side uh, the excavation size is 10 meter by 20 meter uh, so we will have to support it uh, in uh, in both direction as we can as we see here we can see here there are three layers and uh, the penetration of the sheet pile and the soil will be two meters and this is uh, the excavation uh, part so to start to uh, create this uh, problem to have like an overview about the construction stages before we start so we start with uh, uh, we have the whole soil then we start to construct our sheet pile and we will start uh, after we construct our sheet pile we will start to add the uh, bile bit then or uh, here bile uh, we start to add these four biles then we will start to excavate the first layer here up to minus uh, three then we will uh, after we add it uh, up to minus three we will start to construct our first wheeling and strut at minus two then we will go to construct our uh, uh, we will excavate up to minus five and we will add our second stage of wheeling and struts at minus four then we will excavate up to minus uh, seven and we will add the third stage of wheeling and anchors at minus uh, six then our last stage our last stage of excavation it will be up to minus uh, 10 and we will add our uh, stage of construction of wheeling and anchor at minus uh, at minus 8 then after we finish all the excavation uh, we'll start if we but we don't have any loads in the site so the last one will be uh, the last excavation so now we will go to our problem here and we will start to uh, go to uh, to confirm that we made auto connect so we go here to auto connect to make sure that all the faces are connected together we choose boolean to con to share all the faces we select everything and we say apply so now all the faces are connected together now we will go to mesh and we already defined our material as a buried layer and uh, the withering soil and the steel we already defined our uh, we already defined our uh, uh, properties uh, for the soil and for the sheet pile and the struts and for the anchor uh, and the struts here it will be the same as uh, the piles as the uh, wheeling the same section so we will go now to mesh 3d and we will choose all the solids here as, uh, as we can see here uh, we can start our meshing but i just want to go to recap the uh, modified more column we just add uh, the Poisson ratio we add the unit weight and then we go to porous we add the saturated unit weight and we add the initial voids ratio uh, 
uh, our uh, problem is drained we'll talk about undrained later and to remember we have three modulus of elasticity the second modulus which represent the elastic part of the curve and the tangential for the loading part which will be equal to this one and the elastic modulus at the unloading which if we remember it was three times this value and if we talk about sand or silt and if we are talking about soft clay we will con uh, or swelling soil or uh, compressible soil we will consider this as 10 times and this is a uh, failure ratio which represents the uh, plastic uh, part and reference uh, pressure and this is the power steel level uh, for the uh, elastic uh, elastic uh, part uh, and this is the friction angle and we have to add the k node is the at least air pressure and the ultimate dilency angle which is 30 uh, like the friction angle minus 30 and the cohesion uh, and the cap which uh, defines the compression uh, uh, failure so this is for the shear failure this is for the comp uh, compression uh, failure as we talked about this uh, earlier uh, and we said that uh, the failure here is shared between the shear uh, failure and compression failure which overcomes uh, one of the drawback of uh, more column material model uh, so this is like a brief about uh, how we define it now we will start to define uh, or to mesh our problem we will go to hide here so we're gonna hide everything and this is our problem as we can see this is our solids so I can start with meshing our solid by going to 3d mesh and I select everything here like the excavation part and I say that uh, I will mesh it to one meter the size of the mesh will be one meter and here like you can mesh it by size or you can mesh it by division uh, like if you want to, to divide it into like let's say 100 uh, piece or 10 pieces or whatever but we prefer to mesh it by uh, size uh, here he calculated like uh, according like it couldn't be like larger than this uh, value according to the aspect ratio of the mesh so we will like use one meter uh, for this part uh, we have different kind of mesh we have the tetra, uh, tetra mesh it will be like triangular uh, shape or we can use the hybrid mesh between quadrahedral and tetrahedral uh, shape uh, we prefer to use uh, hybrid mesh because uh, it gives you like better distribution for uh, the meshing so we will choose it and we will choose everything here uh, like the uh, all domain and we can say apply we are not gonna define any it doesn't matter now because we are going to uh, include another option which is called parameter which uh, will relate every soil to uh, each layer and we can say apply we can start now we starting meshing our problem as we can see now after this we will start to show other geometry if we went here and we show all the geometry here and I will start to choose those three layers now I will increase the size of the mesh a bit I will make it three meter and we use hybrid mesh and it doesn't matter about the soil right now and I will start to say apply we can see now he will take some time to mesh everything because the domain is larger but we can see now he is almost meshing every part and this is important let's take a minute looking at this meshing I will make this disappear we can see here like we choose the size of the mesh for the excavated part to be one meter and for the other soil to be three meters we can see here that he already redistributed if we didn't do 
like auto connect here to share all the faces together uh, this meshes will not be connected it's very important in finite element to connect all the node together to uh, like to have uh, uh, right uh, solution or correct solution so uh, he will start like the program will start to mesh uh, with one meter closer to this uh, side and the size of the mesh will start to uh, increase up to the end so now we meshed all our 3d uh, mesh okay now we will start to go to our sheet pile so we will go to the sheet pile we will we will um, ignore this for now and we will go now to geometry we will show all the geometry we hide this one and we hide this one and we hide this one we want to hide everything we just needed these faces to be here we will go to mesh and we will go to extract so what do you want to extract i want to extract face because now we are dealing with 2d like we want to do it as in 2d now it's sheet pile and we're gonna call it sheet pile and we'll come as we can see here like this so he will start to ask which face so we can see that we already choose these faces like this so if we saw here we already choose all side faces and we can use apply and close if I did this like this we can see this is our sheet pile let's take a measure its length it's 12 meter as we said and the excavation will be up to here as we can see now we want to start to create our wheeling if we remember we can do it as extract again so we will extract from uh, mesh and mesh node so we will start to choose the first wheeling it will be up to two meters so I'm gonna choose this element and we see he choose all the sides here and we can say we call this wheeling one and it will be strut it will be beam element and we say apply he refuses to do it why because he's asking us to choose reference element so i will go back again and i will choose the nodes at this level and for the element i will choose this element to be reference element and i will say willing one and i say apply so this is the first one the second willing will be at level the next level up to two meters so it will be here and the reference element will be here and we say apply the third one will be here uh, two meters and element this is the element and we say apply last one will be here at this level at minus uh, so minus 8 and we say reference as we can see here and we call it wheeling stage 4 and we say apply so this is the extraction of the wheeling as we can see here now 
we'll start to add our wheeling so we will go to curves like this first thing I will remove the meshing and I will show it like this so the first level here like I don't want to see this or this or this or this one I will hide them and this is the first level of wheeling it will be like this so I will go to 1d element and I will start to mesh our wheeling I will choose strut because as we agreed it's well strut top and I will choose those strut for and I will choose this element as well there should be another element here we can draw it first the lateral one we go to geometry and we we can just come here and we start to uh, translate it and make a copy the distance will be 2 meter up in positive direction direction as we, we can show it here positive z direction and we can see he say select the object so we are selecting our object and we say apply cancel and we come here again and we say mesh 1d mesh and we start to choose this it should be 5 correct and we want the size of our 1d element to be just 1 meter and it's well, gonna be a strut and we're gonna call it wailing or strut 1 the top strut and we say apply then we do the same with the second one we call it strut 2 and we say apply we can do this this with uh, with the anchor so we can go to intersect this one and this one and we come here give me this one and give me this one so we already choose this section and we choose anchor 3 and we choose the, the property is anchor and we say apply so we come here and we choose this one and this one and we choose this one so it's as we can see we choose the other level so again we're choosing this three there could be like a mistake here so making cancel and we're making another cancel so there should be here another anchor here so we can just here and we can choose this one because those are three so we should just say geometry and we can say translate and we choose the direction to be this direction y direction negative one and we can say just there is another technique we can do it with two points so just translate it from this point to this point and if we just check copy and we checked this one he say five meters we can check here and we confirm this and we say 
apply so we already created it now we can go here again and we can choose mesh and we go to 1d element we could choose size to be one meter again and it's anchor and we call it anchor 3 for level 3 we choose here we choose this anchor should be 12 and we choose this one we choose this one so we already have 12 anchors and we say apply then we will go here and choose this one choose this one and we choose this one and this one and we say anchor 4 for stage 4 of construction and we say apply cancel now we can just show our meshing if we make those disappeared and this is our structure system the sheet pile and the fourth stage of whaling struts and anchors the last thing is choosing the four piles and we as well choose the size to be one and we call them piles but the section will be strut and we say apply so as we can see here if we went back to properties and I asked him please show me the extrusion for strut element and for the anchor element we can start to see the distribution and the real section of the whaling because this as we can see here this is the long one of the whaling here and this is the short direction in the vertical direction it doesn't matter for the struts because it carry axial load so if it's in this direction fine if in the vertical direction fine but we prefer it in vertical direction because here it doesn't matter too much but if it's carrying load it would be important to put it in the lateral direction besides this is strut element it will not carry any uh, moment or anything so it doesn't matter it just carry axial uh, sorry it's strut element so it here we just care about the axial uh, load unless it's carry like load we will have to rotate this to show you something as we can see here like part of the wheeling here we can move this wheeling to the inside if we went back to property here and went to strut and went to section here and we asked him okay show it from center bottom and we said okay okay so close he take it all out which is not correct so I will go back again and I will make strut section so it's gonna be section uh, center top so where's center top gonna be here so we say okay okay so this is more realistic for this strut element because first thing we create our we create our sheet pile then inside we start to build our beam element for the whaling as we can see here and then we start to create our strut or to drill our uh, anchor so this is make sense like if we hide we can as well extrude the sheet pile with the 10 centimeters we can see its thickness now so as we can see here so this is our system like 
the wheeling inside. So it's very important to notice all these things. So I don't need to extrude anymore. So if I did it like this and did it like this, hide all of that. So this is our element. Now I just need to show our sheet pile to start to create our interface. But before this, I will adjust the parameter first. So I will show all the solids here so before I do the interface I have to create all the soil or I have to assign all the soil to all the element because when I start to add the interface for the sheet pile he will like the program will start to create interface relative to the adjacent soil so if the adjacent soil is a specific soil then I went to create another interface then I went to create another uh, element that will like destroy all the interface idea so I have to start first with parameter so I go to parameter here in the mesh ribbon and the element tab I go to interface element uh, before interface sorry we go to parameter so it's 3d so we choose here the top soil we don't have to take intersect now because it will take more element and i choose change property fine and i choose the top soil and i say it will be buried layer and i say apply then i choose the next layer and it will be columnar uh, soil and i say apply and the last one it will be the withering one and i say apply now if i went here to the meshing part and i will start to show it by property color as we can see it's all adjust uh, adjusted to this as we can see now Now it's easy to go to interface to show the wheeling sheet pile. So now we will start with interface. So we go to interface. Now we will start with plan. We go to type and we choose from shell interface and we will go to select the uh, the element and we can go here and we choose sheet pile because we will put the sheet pile from inside and outside and yes as we can see both direction and we'll start to merge like here we create rigid link do you remember the theory behind the rigid link is when we create our interface we start with our first construction stage with uh, adding the soil and if we didn't add the rigid link uh, the stresses and uh, the, the, the strains will not be correct as there will be, like there will be uh, no connectivity between the nodes and that's not correct that's why we uh, sub, uh, we like uh, substitute this with another element called rigid link until we add the interface then we take the rigid link deactivate it again so we create rigid rigid link then we can create uh, merge uh, nodes we choose the bottom so we can select here so all these nodes can move together we merge all these nodes and we call it sheet pile interface 
and we say apply of course there is no property here because we decided to define it uh, automatically so we go to wizard as the relative stiffness between the steel and the soil is very high so we choose 0.1 meter for as a virtual thickness and we will choose 0.5 as a reduction factor for the um, or 0.6 between the steel and the soil and we say ok and we say apply he will start to create all our interface if we look here we will find that he created the sheet pile interface and he created the sheet pile uh, element so this is the uh, interface and this is the rigid link so if we hide all of this we show our rigid link here and by interface if we went back here to material now we will find that he created two materials one for the top soil and one for the bottom soil and it's reduced as we can see here and if we went back to properties you will find that he created interface property and he created interface property for the other layer and he created rigid link from other like if you went here other you can create different things one of them is the rigid link so you start uh, to check it as you can see here he rigid everything the transition in x and y and z direction and the rotation in x and y and z direction so all the nodes will be connected together now we will go to after we did this we will go to the static tab and we will show everything here and we will go to constraints and we will add auto constraints here and we say apply so he added the constraints here we add the self weight and we call it gravity and we say apply and the direction of the gravity in minus z direction then we will hide everything and we will show the first direction of the sheet pile and we will check this so we will go to the pre-stressed value so I will go to pre-stress force and I will call this anchor I will choose the element here from select object sorry we choose pre-stressed force so where is pre-stressed yeah here pre-stressed pre-tension type and 200 kilonewton and it's from truss uh, truss element and as we can see here 60 like we have we uh, the length of this uh, element is 5 uh, is 5 uh, meter as a pretension force and we have 12 elements that means uh, we have to have uh, 5 by 12 will be 60 so here this is uh, 20 and this is 40 and this is 60 let's see yes and anchor 3 and we say apply sorry 
200 pretension force we say apply we say this is 4 anchor 4 and we show this one and we go back again here we need 60 piece and here 20 and here another 20 this is 20 20 and 60 now we have 60 element and we say apply and cancel now we already defined this so we hide that too and we show the pile we added all constraints for the whole system and the pile here if we so it's allowed to rotate in uh, to, to be translated in x y z direction and it's allowed to rotate around x y curve but it's not allowed to rotate around z curve that's why we'll go to constraints again and we'll go to advanced and I will check all the pile nodes and I will ask him to constrain it around RZ and we say uh, rotation RZ and we say apply and we say cancel now we already defined everything in our book we'll go back here and we go to advance to analysis we already define our boundary condition we already define our static we go back here to model to define all of our soil so if we came here like this and we showed the soil so we rename it again we call this uh, buried layer and we call this one rename the second layer we call it collivium and this one will be weathering soil then we will go to 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 hide those three layers we will hide all the boundary we hide static we hide as well from here sheet pile up to rigid link we didn't need to see this so this is We can start with this one and we can say we can merge those together because the first top three meters will be the first excavation. We can merge, merge them together and we can say this is first excavation. then we say merge those together and we call them second excavation then 
we can merge these layers and we call them third excavation then this layer and this layer we call them we merge them and we call them fourth excavation and finally this is the last one and we call this embedment depth now our answer is very organized and we already know everything now we go to analysis and we go to our stages but we have to save our model and we go to stages and add and we add our first stage to add the first stage we'll add all the soil but we will show the data to be activated so at the beginning here we call this stage as initial stage and we have to be very focused now because this is very important stage in our uh, modeling which is simulating the construction stage at the beginning all the soil will be exist the embedment depth and the weathering soil we will clear the displacement there is no water level and I say um, here as well there is an important thing which is we have to activate the rigid link so where is the rigid link here we have to activate it and we say save so this is the initial stage so we added all the soil and we added uh, the X4 excavation and the embedment depths and the three layers and the rigid link in the tab of or in the section of boundary we have to add the boundary the general boundary condition and in the loading part we have to add the gravity part and we say save so this is simulate our initial condition don't forget to clear the displacement from the first condition because we are not interested in seeing the displacement when because this is the real case where the soil is exist so we can't uh, can't get any displacement from this one then I start with the next one which is sheet pile at this stage I will activate the sheet pile sheet pile sheet pile interface and I will deactivate the rigid link now I can add as well the pile and we can add here we deactivated this one and we installed the sheet pile sheet pile interface and the pile and we have to activate the rotation RZ and we can say save and the next one we can start with the first excavation and we can just go to first excavation we take this out and we activate our first wheeling and first stage of strut and we say save and next second excavation and we deactivate the second step and we activate the second wheeling and the second uh, strut we say new and third excavation we deactivate the third uh, excavation and we activate the first anchor or we have to add the wheeling three first 
and we have to add anchor 3 and don't forget to add the pretension force from anchor 3 and we say save new now the last uh, like the last excavation case which is excavation force excavation and we deactivate excavation 4 and we activate anchor for wheeling 4 and anchor 4 and we say save and I say close close if I came here to simulate stages we can see the development of cases here so if we showed here the excavation element it should be 10 meters we can measure this here as we can see they are 10 meters so it's very important to include this in your solution and to know exactly the construction stages otherwise the, the solution will have a lot of problems now we go to analysis in the analysis part we choose our analysis type or solution type to be construction stages and we in analysis control there is no water pressure so we don't have to include it but it's fine the initial stages for the stress analysis it comes from the initial stage we, we applied and we choose the solution to be using k node condition and we will talk in further lecture when we talk about slope stability what is the difference between k node condition and gravity condition but for now we just choose uh, apply k node condition and we say ok and we call it run one and we say ok now our solution is completed we save our model and we start to run it We can see that the model is very large and it will take some time to be run. Here we can notice the number of nodes is 18,000 and the number of elements is 21,000 and the number of degrees of freedom is 63,000 which is almost three uh, times the number of nodes because each node has three degrees of freedom. Uh, in the boundary, this is the number of equation, and it will take some time to run this analysis. We have to make sure when we are running our analysis, it's very important to go to tools and option and analysis. You have to include the GPU acceleration to uh, make your solution more fast, and you have to include all your. Uh, processor to be able to do this we can go here and you go to performance here you find that you have six cores 12 uh, and you have 12 logic prof uh, processor and you include them in your solution now the model is running I will pause the, uh, the run, uh, like the video until we finish with the run then we will start to analyze the results so now after we the model has been run we can start to view the results here we can start with the uh, uh, stresses in z direction and 
we can view the results as we can see fringe and undeformed we can here in the control size we can say apply so this is our model and if you came here in the size and you said auto range he will start to give you the model as we can see here so this is the stresses as we can see here we can do a lot here we with the stresses if we came here at the final stage of excavation we can see here this is the effect of the piles if we went back here to the model and we this we take this off so we can see here the effect of the piles we can see here the distribution of the stresses on the size and it's decreasing as if it's lateral we can see here the lateral stresses in x direction so this is the lateral stresses we can see the deformation of the by of the model as we can see here so we will look more in the here if we went back to the final one we can start to look at the displacement we can see the total displacement here if we went to O2 we can see here that this is the displacement of the model in different cases so let's start here let's show the minimum and the maximum it starts with zero now let's show it in millimeter so this is half millimeter with the first excavation let's make it undeformed to be clear and auto range and now it started to three meters with the next excavation five millimeters six millimeters and almost six millimeter now with the whole excavation we want to see through the model so here there is a, a very important feature so if we went here to ISO surface so he's asking you or let's go back first to the clipping surface so we can cut our model as we want so we can make it here and we can say add how about if we said reverse so reverse again so we see it like this and we say add so this is our clipping plan we cut our model in x direction so how about if we took it at y direction as well we say reverse so this is in the middle and we say add and we say close so now we see the corner of the model here so Midas GTSNX has a very important feature which we can see inside the model inside the solid as we can see here and we can see here now the deformation it will be more clear so this is the shape of the deformation like now we are inside the model we can see the stresses we can see the deformation in x direction and in z direction and y direction we can look at the stresses 
and the flow distresses in Z direction as we can see here and we can see here through this one the effect of this of the construction stages and why it's really important we also can do another feature here if we hide the rigid link and the plan interface and we went back here to take cutting diagram from here to there like this is uh, x y and i want to take it in let's say i will take a cutting diagram here at this point and one at this point and i will tell him show me the stresses in x direction show me the stresses in x direction or you can reverse and see or in y direction to be more obvious but we took wrong one so we can say again cutting diagram this is the first point and this is the second point here at the same x the same y but a different z so let's say at here but this will be like this but minus as we can see now and show me the results in x direction we can see now the diagram of stresses and we say ok apply now we have a diagram here which shows the distribution of sigma z stresses here we can show it in meter again so this is the vertical stress let's see if we went if we came back here again and i told him display uh like to take off the part uh, like as you can see here this is the uh, the rest of the model i don't want to see this and i say close and i don't want to see any of this uh, uh, element i don't want to see the sheet pile or the piles or I don't want to see any constraints so this is and I don't want to see the whaling here as I can see here I don't want to see anything I just want to see the solid element as we can see here this is the effect of in stress is the effect of the pile carrying the whaling so we can see here the distribution of stresses or the vertical stress let's see the lateral stresses here in x direction so we can see the effect of the lateral air pressure now in this direction and if we talk y direction they are both the same
Now this is y direction and x direction. It is the same. The distri lateral distribution is the same. Almost the same, like not too much difference. We can see here the principal stresses and we can see the one misses stresses as we can see here we stick with auto range we can see the strains we can see the point which reached the plastic here around the soil we can look at the displacement again this is the total displacement and we can see here the bulb of the displacement around here and we can see the deformation and we can see here the displacement in z direction and in x direction y direction since this is y direction so we can see the displacement here in millimeter we can see that we will have this kind of lateral displacement in this part and here is the maximum so we can add an another cutting diagram here so if we came here and we said this way but at minus 10,000 millimeter and please show me the diff like the values in y direction it will be more obvious like apply so we see now you can see now the shape of the deformation if you came here and we say i don't want to see this one and i don't want to see the minimum and the maximum so we can see that this model will move at this point around two millimeters or almost three millimeters you also can come here and say show table he will give you table and if you click right if you you can take it here and go to Excel and handle your diagram we also can show here the lateral stresses in this direction and we can see the maximum lateral stress In both directions they will be almost the same doesn't matter so we can see here that the values is almost the same in this side and this side so this is regarding your model in the stresses and strains if we show the bore stress it will be zero because there is no bore stress so it's gonna be zero there is another feature good feature here since we are still talking about that I will display these diagrams and I will show vertical stresses here there is something called isoplan surface which shows you the part of the soil which is affected by or with this range of stresses so if we see here you can adjust this and if you came back here which shows the total stress here and show that we can show the value of soil with this size of settlement so here 
the displacement of two millimeter will be in this area of the soil we can see this is the kind of deformation and until it vanish at five millimeter or six millimeter there is no any uh, all nodes will not be moved more than this this is the number of, of nodes we can see that sides now started to move so this is very good feature of to present your data to see if you want to say that I want to see the soil 0.002 millimeter so I want to see all the nodes which moved for like let's say two and a half millimeter so this is all the nodes that moved like this let's say moved just one millimeter so this is the part of the our model which moved this portion of settlement we can see for TZ now if we went back here and we can look and see there is a prop here which we can use it to get the settlement here and this at this point and at this point we can see it's almost equal each other this one equal this one and this one equal this one for the pile settlement and here at uh, different nodes we can see the values of the settlement we also can show here we also can present many data here and at different ways we can show here at this size uh, contour as we can see here we can show as well the vic if we are showing vectors like like this so this is the shape of the movement and we can control all of the vector shapes row here even the size the font the color this is for presentation the deformation size here we can control it so if we came to vector again I don't want to see any vector so no vector and if I went back here to contour I don't want to see any contour and I will just go to deform shape I think here is the deformation and I want to increase the deformation factor to 3 and say apply we can see that this is the shape of the deformation I can make it 1 and say apply we can make it actual deformation and say apply so this is the shape of the actual deformation and we can multiply it by 10 and we say apply and you do whatever you want to present your data here and you can even show relative uh, deformation here is a value for the legend here you can show it at any uh, color and you can choose the background everything of this one we used it to be transparent what if we want to be solid fill and we used color to be black and we say apply as we can see here but we prefer it to be transparent and we say apply this is regarding the like the, the presentation of the data for the for this part uh, of solids now we will start to look at different kind of data which is the structure element if we looked here at the final stage 
we will find that there are different things to be shown. The shell force. Here we will go to a moment, but first we will close everything and we will show the sheet pile. And this is the shape of the moment in y direction here. So you can start to see the moment and you design your sheet pile or to increase its thickness. In x, x direction. And here you can do another thing. You can take a cutting diagram. So you go to a cutting diagram and you choose this one. You choose this one and you say show it in x direction and you can say not 20 division make it 50 and you can show it you can do cutting plan like here three you can choose even the type selection plan plan normal and surface whatever you can choose three points this one and this one and this one for example like you can control more you can make it 100 and you say show me and you can say apply for example close you can see more about like let's say this is yy so you sh see where is the maximum moment and you show this result and you design your sheet pile now we can go back to show the beam element We show here the wheeling system and struts and anchors here and we come here to this result and we don't need to show the angles and the anchors because they are truss elements so nothing will be appeared so we'll come here to beam element this is the stresses you can show the forces like the xx this shell sorry I want beam element force here as we can see here so you have all of this here and you can present it in your report you take your own screenshot we can show the minimum and the maximum and you can design your beam and this is the bending moment in y direction the shear in z direction as we can see it makes sense we can see the axial forces here in the struts as we see that the struts has axial force we can do another thing here we can just select an element for example this one and say show and we can start to see what's in this element and we present it and we say close and show everyone and show everything for the anchor 
element we can come here it's a truss forces and we say this is axial and we say this is a stage we can find here it's 200 the pre force and we can just go the same and we choose one of them and we say choose this one for example and I ask them to show and I say close so here is the value like if we choose the prop here here this is 200 the pretension force we added this is here and at the end here we can see that the friction decreased and the axial force here is 13 from here we can activate everything again so we can see the other level it will be almost the same but let's see what will be the friction like the axial force here so we can hide and we say show and close prop and we choose this point we can see we need to increase the pretension force here and this is like this and we can see this is a value here so we can design our anchor according to this I will activate all the elements again and I will get back to sheet pile we will show the diagram for the sheet pile here and we will modify it, edit to show the results as we want and Z direction and we apply like if we showed our sheet pile again here and let's see the shell forces here this is the pending moment in this diagram as we can see here when we modified it to the other direction we can see here this is the moment and we can see the maximum and the minimum moment here and we can design our sheet pipe there is a lot to say about the results here but last thing we will talk about regarding the results is how to view or to create a report so we we'll go to export to 3d pdf so if we went to export to 3d pdf he will ask you what kind of paper landscape or portrait and which stages do you want to show the results from so let's say i will i'm interested in seeing the displacement and i want to see the meshing and I want to see in the results, I want to see total displacement, I want to see lateral displacement, and I want to see in the solid, but this is the initial stage, there is nothing to be seen, but okay, I want to see here the same thing in each step, I want to see the displacement. I want to see the displacement as we can see 
He's telling here us that it may be slow if we choose many things, but fine. Let's see. If, okay. He will start to develop you a report, and we are interested in seeing what is the shape of the report, and we can update this. You can see it takes some time. And every time you increase the size of your report, it will take more time. But we will see how how the how that uh, uh, report looks nice. And it's like a 3D file. You can include it in your report to increase your if work efficiency. Maybe the report was very long. So let's just create a small report from the displace final displacement here. And we say, okay, it's a small report, we just need to see it. Like, finally, it will give you like a report like this but it will be filled. I just have a problem with my PDF. But if you have an original PDF file uh, program, you will see that you can load your soft, like your uh, model here and you create a very nice report. We will end our uh, session on this lecture here we just like recap for what we're learning we learn it we learn it how to create to ex first 3d model how to extrude how to use parameter how to use interface in 3d how to use different uh, elements either 1d or 2d for the sheet pile or 1d for the stress and the wheeling and uh, the anchor we learn it how to model uh, how to um, use uh, modified more column uh, and how to use uh, how to represent our results in different uh, ways um, uh, like you can present your report as you want and you show the data you need and you check the displacement the straining the forces everything you can and show it in uh, a report uh, but it's very important to understand the idea behind uh, the modeling and uh, how you can simulate your construction stages. Uh, see you next lecture. Thank you.